Okay, so what we have here is the Brinley Lawn Sweeper. That's the one with the mounted dethatcher. It's part STS 42 BHDK A. I'm gonna do a little unboxing for you and then uh, probably show you how to install or assemble it. I'm always afraid to cut in these boxes if they got something delicate on the top, you know, he might cut into it like the, the bin part of it. Okay, what do we got here? You know, you gotta do these unboxing videos when you can because there's only one time that you can open it and have everything just the way it is. It looks like it wasn't uh, beat up too much in shipping. Or for whatever reason, I don't know what. You can really only get these on Amazon. If you go on Brindley's website under the retailers or where you get them, where to buy, all it's listed is Amazon. Maybe there's some out there that have them, but. Not that I'm aware of. Okay, what do we got here? We got bolts, hardware, whatever you want to see. Huh, gonna need to be a man for this part. Instructions are in there. you over to the other side. Right here you can see the main part. Yeah, I like the wheels on it. They're bigger and they're really grippy. Some of them have uh, you know smaller ones that are really hard plastic and they really don't grip that good. So hopefully this one grips good. I don't know. I'm hoping it's gonna work good. I need one. I haven't seen any resemblance of a dethatcher yet. We'll see. That'll be in these boxes or something. We got this. I'm part of the, the hopper. Whatever you want to call it. We've got some bars. It's not Roseanne bar. This is probably the uh, pull handle for the for the rope. Thatcher here. Yep. Kit D Thatcher. So they kind of kind of got it packaged like package within the package.
for any parts. They just keep coming. I'm not real, real worried about marking it up because what's it going to be subjected to, right? There, I think that's it. I need an alien pad. Alright, here's what you get with the defacking. Nice sound. This, hardware, these. Two rods. I think these are to catch the tines if they break. I think it's a safety thing. I think this is for adjusting it, for putting it back. And then the tines. There's not a lot of companies that make a sweeper with a mounted dethatcher. You can, Agrifab makes one, you gotta buy the dethatcher after, and that's only one bar, so single tines. This has two, one front and back, and then an offset. So I think this will do a better job, but it's also more costly. Well, from what I can tell, the ones assembly instructions from what I read on reviews and stuff for this, people said it was left some to be desired. I can see why. It was like here, just shows the the hamper or the basket or whatever you want to call it. Here's the parts to use, and then it's supposed to be done. Then it goes on to the assembling of the sweeper itself. So I'm just gonna kind of go in order, and I'm gonna. See what we got here and work on the stuff that it calls for in order. So I believe these bars are for the hamper. Alright, so there's the, the main part of it. I'll probably end up making a bunch of mistakes here and having to redo stuff. That's usually how it goes in assembling something, right? It doesn't really tell you how to do it, just you're supposed to do it based off the picture. So, good UTF for that. Let's see what we can do here. Hopefully, you're in view here. Seems like it's hard to get you in view. Okay, get that side through. There it is. She made her. So I'm gonna take the other bar, that's a, this one, like this, and put it through the other side. There she got to go up through here. Don't worry about that when I get to it. We need with the flat part. Alright. Okay, this will help prop it up when I get these in. So you got your two on each side and then you got your one I fished in the back.
Okay, so looking at the picture, I had these in, I had the back one in. I wasn't sure if these go on the inside on the bottom or the outside. So sometimes it helps to look at like the, just the main drawing of it. Looks to me like the bars on the outside. I believe these two bigger bars are for the sweeper. I believe I'll put them over there. And these two little guys are going to be put in here to prop it up. So I'm going to get that back bar on first. And then I'll see if I can get them rods in. Okay, I'm going to say that the I'm gonna say this bar goes on the inside, I'm thinking. I'll find out. I really can't tell you for sure. Hopefully you're in the shot here. But I'm thinking that bar is on the inside. Instructions leave some to be desired. They don't really show this much. Pretty much figure it out. I think one of the reviews said IKEA has got better instructions. But that's why I'm making you the video. You can kind of figure it out as we go here. These rods are showing the inside, so let's see if I can get it here. I need the holes to line up here for the rods. Don't poke your eye out. You guys don't realize how much more of a pain in the butt it is to do this and try and keep the camera in and everything. Judging by the website, I don't see bars on the outside. The rod going up is on the inside. So I'm thinking I got it right. Let's see if it'll come out. Uh, this side's being a pain in the butt. I'm gonna try and get it, get it here. The rod is uh, bent, so it's like it's not, not in the hole all the way. That side's pretty good. So it looks like for the most part to do this, your grass basket, bin, whatever, you're gonna be using panel E and panel F. The hex nuts. Are the ones that don't have the the nylon nylock these lock once they get to the plastic they bite in and so these are going on first i got to take this out anyway get the lock nut on I made a mistake. 
nuts. The three A's. Bigger than the other ones. This snaps around. This little flap snaps around. These lock nuts are a different style. They kind of got like stakes on them. So they make it hard to go in. So I'll have to get a wrench for that, but I'll do that after. Looks like the basket's gonna be made to come off easy. I think that's what their goal is there. So I need, we're going hex nut, lock washer, and or um, flat washer on each side, and then the lock nut. Like this. Um, I'll probably put the smooth side towards the, let's see which way's gonna pivot. Put the smooth side towards the outside because this is going to be pivoting and it won't dig into the metal here as much. There's always a, a burr side and then a smooth side. And then lock nut. Do that for the other side. Once I get these nuts tight and stuff, it'll, it'll make this stronger, beef it all up. And I think, except for these caps, I gotta be careful getting out of here without cutting them. Caps go in here on the outside, just like that. So this will be edited down for make it look like I know what I'm doing. I, I don't. I, this is the first time I ever seen this thing. First time in assembling one. If I did more, one might be able to do a lot easier. So no, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, for this part, we're gonna use panel A. Looks like this is the goal. Turn around like this, and it's gonna mount down here like this. Somehow or another. Screwed up again. I like to screw up. It's fun. So wondering why this hole didn't line up here. There's a slot, two slotted holes, and neither one lined up. Because it's gonna go up higher. That's all you learn, right? Make mistakes and try it again. This is gonna go higher up. This. this is going to be sticking above. There we go. So, 
top hole actually. This is gonna be sticking up above. And that's what I did wrong. That's okay. It's not so bad. There. Makes more sense now. And I'll tighten these after I think. Okay. Okay, now we're working off of panel B on here. Is the next step, step two. You're gonna put this in the lift handle. It's called a lock pin. And then uh, the lock washer and a hex nut, not the lock one, hex nut. And again, I'm gonna tighten that after. Okay, so next step is using the remaining of panel B. So it's gonna be the 5 16 bolt, the spring, two flat, 5 16 flat washers, and the nylon lock nut. And it looks to me like, and again, I could get it wrong. It's gotta go through here and here. So I'm gonna have to, you gotta kinda pull on it to get it to go here. Cause you're putting pressure, you're actually lifting it. And then we got the, the washer. Putting the flat side, the rough, smooth side towards the metal because that's kind of where it's going to pivot. The spring, another washer. That one shouldn't matter either way. And then the lock nut. What that's going to allow you to do is to pull it out and adjust it. Adjust your uh, height. Again, I'll tighten that leader. Looks like you can tighten that to put more pressure on it too. Okay, the next step is using panel C. It's gonna be two bolts, two 5 16 by one and a half, two 5 16 lock nuts, and this handle grip. Handle grip's going on first. Like this. I don't know if it's gonna need to be soaked in something. See if I can get it on here. And got her. What a hell of a man, huh? Okay. Now we're putting these on. These are the tow handles. Okay, so it's going to go like this. And then your bolts. Bolt and nut. sweeper huh? okay the next part to put the hitch clevis on is you're going to use panel d so two hex bolts half by two and a half and then this to be the hitch pin and then the half inch oops i mean uh five sixteenths by two and a quarter hex bolts what you're going to use two of them and then the 516 lock nuts. So you're going to put this in like so. It's going to, you're going to have to kind of adjust it however your the one more height is. So I don't really know where I'm going to put this. Probably something like this. Adjust it to your more. Hmm. 
So basically, it's just saying the next step is to just, just um, put this to match your one more height. If you want these parallel with the ground, it says. Now I'm going to tighten the bolts up. These are carriage bolts, so you don't have to be held on the other side. I think I might do this one first. All right, I'm not a huge fan of these nuts going like right into the recession. So I am gonna change it by adding flat washers. Like that. Just peace of mind, I guess. quite as professional but I'm okay with that as long as you got a full knot it should be fine now the desatcher has got its own instructions so you have to do that separate all right so back at this super project I got further along in the instructions and I realized I screwed up. I'll admit it. I'm not worried. Well, all it was is the there is instructions for the for the basket hamper, whatever the hell you want to call it. So if you're doing this, I'm not gonna take it apart and show you step by step because I already have it done. But if you're doing this by the book here, this is really just showing you, even though it says assembly, what goes, what's uh, part of the basket or hopper. And then it starts with the sweeper assembly. So after that, it does have starting with the, the hamper. So I'm not going to take it all apart, I'm just going to show you how they should tell you to do it. So how they want it done is you put the three bottom ones together first and then you drop it into the hamper like that. And then you fish that one through the top one and then fish this one through the sides. And then connect them. Basically what I did, I just did it, I did it in a different order. But this does have better instructions when you get to actually do it the right way. Yeah, I just did it in, a, in kind of in my own order. Uh, one thing I'll point out here is it kind of shows you on this tube right here, this rod. Using the hardware in panel E, symbol one. 3 ace hex nut. So this one. That'd be the one that doesn't lock. On each end of the hamper rod. Until it's approximately in the center of the threads. So I gotta move it. To about there. So that's really all that's different. From what I've done. So approximately in the center of the thread. So I'll move that and I'll tighten it up right away then. Alright the instructions say. To put this lock nut flush with the end of the rod and then this one goes about halfway and then it says to leave it loose i'm not sure why you want it loose i'll probably figure that out after i get it running here um it says uh upper and lower side tubes which is these two should be trapped between the hex nut and lock nut which they are on the hamper stop rod, but still loose enough to pivot freely. If the tubes do not pivot freely, loosen the hex nut. Well, it can pivot. So, there might be a reason why. So I'll do that for this one. It's 
probably gonna straighten these these sides out too and get it all kind of parallel. Okay, it can move yet, so we'll see if that works. So now let's really put the rope on here and then slip around here, put the clevises in and the keepers. Okay, now I tighten these, I got the other side done. Uh, back to the half inch. Ah, these you don't want to go tight either because it's got to be able to pivot. So right there is there's friction on it to so go back a little bit just so it pivots like that easy. This one's the same way. That's where it's going to pivot when you go to dump it. Okay. Now we mount this under the receiver. Like so. That's how you take it off easily. There you go. All right. Here's how it's gonna work. Yeah, the instructions don't say anything about the the wind flap. Uh, I'm gonna leave it down for now. Otherwise, it's always here. Looks like you put that tube through it, right? Okay, operating uh, using the windscreen. So you can use it fully open, like the way it has has it right now, the way I have it right now in the back. Fold it over. All the windscreen to hang off the back of the hamper. This condition can be used when there's little to no wind. Operating speed should be slower. And position two, windscreen half closed. Attach the windscreen to the hamper mount tubes. I think it goes on this tube here. So you slide it on this tube. Take the clevis out, put it on that tube. It seemed like it would get pinched in there, but. I don't know. I'm gonna run without it for now. Okay, so the thatcher kind of comes in its own package and instructions here. And so you get here's the tines. Kind of wussy tines. Although probably not any worse than a, than a hand rake. And the hardware comes in a bag on this one instead of the Prepackaged in like this. So lay the tree upside down first thing. So the 90. It's got a 90 degree here and then like a not even a 45, probably like a 30. Or actually, since I bend stuff at work, that's more like 150. Obtuse. Dump them all on here. Pretty straightforward. So just like this. Washer. And the lock nut. I'm gonna go ahead and do all them and then I'll be back. All right, I got all the tines on. Uh, this hole in the center stays open. That's for the 
the bracket, pivot bracket. So I am going to use the little drill this time. Half inch. Tighten them all up. Make sure they're parallel with the front here. All right, I finished them all with the ratchet, making sure they're parallel. The holding here is pull. I just ran, used the drill to run it in close, and then finish it off with the ratchet. So you run this through the tines. I believe what that's for. This one's a little bit off. I believe what that's for is if the time breaks, usually they'll break in this area here and it'll catch them instead of being on your lawn and being a safety hazard. This one's a little bit off too. So you're going to take the pliers and bend it right over. Bend her over so she can't come out. That's good. Okay, we turn it over. Next, we align the pivot bracket. This with the center hole at the back of the tray. Short side of this. That's long and short. Short side goes to the tray to the bottom here. Tighten securely using 5 16 by 3 quarter carriage. Same ones that was used in the last step. And the 5 16 block nut. I was wondering why there was one extra. Tighten securely. Did that with a ratchet? No, I didn't say rat shit. I said ratchet. Okay, attach the lift handle, which is this, attach the lift handle six against the outside edge of the pivot bracket, which we just put on in the following order. The 5 16 bolt, pivot bracket, flat washer between them, then the lift handle, like this. And then the 516 lock nut. God, I'm terrible today. No tighten until the lift handle six is barely free to move. And that's what the lock nuts are for. So they can't come off and then but you can still leave it it's quite tight. It's barely free to move. that slide flat grip 14 over the end of the lift handle so this guy got it going pretty good so far now it's time to mount it to the sweeper Let's see if we can do that okay we gotta remove these that's nice six and a half inches up so it should be like 
parallel to the ground like this. I'm not sure if this is the mower I'm going to use, but for getting this set up, I'll use it. I'm going to get these bars parallel. So down, I'll try it down a little bit. Maybe I'll try two knots in here. All right, for now, I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm going to the next step. So you want six and a half inches here. To the bottom of this. And she have it. That's close enough. That'll teach it up with the nut and the washer on. Then let's get it all off. That will teach it. There, I think I got her started. That should work. So it wants six and a half inches. Pretty close. I'll leave it there. Can always adjust it later. Tighten both sides until the dethatcher tray is barely free to pivot. Also tighten the fasteners from step 12. Turn. Okay, so the next step is the last step. Pretty easy. You mount this rod, link rod. You can mount it below, so like this below the toe seat, like this, and then it says in the center hole here. Looks to me like they both get the job done. So like here it goes back or forward too far and then when it tips I don't like it see it goes forward too far but it does tip see it goes, it goes through here the center I don't really like that so I think because you can go for the top or the bottom of this I think I like this better on top. I'll put the links in. Can't come out. And you can adjust it too, which I like. The fact that there's adjustments to it. So here's out of the way. It really lifts pretty high. I'm, I'm pleased with that because. Well, I suppose when the sweeper's down, though, let's see. It's still, there's still quite a bit of room there, actually. I thought this stuff for sticks and stuff, stuff I don't want to get caught in the tines. I'm glad it goes out of the way far. Oh, yeah, that'll work good. Put it on like that. You can go to the front hole here too, so you do have quite a few adjustments here. Let's 
see what I want to do here. It's really not bad there. Let's try one upwards. Oh, try one down. Oh, that center hole is really pretty good. There. I put these bolts back in and I'll probably try it out. This they want you to stick onto the tractor with this Velcro. But I don't know what tractor I'm even going to be using. Alright, I'm just going to try it out a little bit and then uh, I'll do a separate video on the whole thing, how it works and kind of a review after I get used to it and run it for a while. So I'm going to do pine cones and uh, I got sticks and you know just the regular thatch. I'm stick it right here and this isn't going to be the only video, I'm just going to just try it out here. I'll do a whole review of it later. Just see what it's gonna do. It's getting dark anyway, so. figured out. I'm pretty dumb though. Okay. Now that I kind of have some battle scars already. So what happens is where I had it here. I shouldn't be able to go down. I'm like, where can I put that it don't go down? And then I seen this little thing here. It's supposed to be on that side. So, I have a slightly bent bracket, but it won't be the first time, right? I'm gonna turn it like that once. That works. That's gonna guarantee it only goes down to here. So when it starts pulling, it'll, it can only go like that. Until it does that type of thing. Um, well, let's try that. Let's see if that works. It might be down too far, too. I might have to raise it up a little bit. Yeah, I'll have to go up a little bit here. Actually, there. I like to turn the brushes. Make sure it's not too far down. So let's try that once. If I have to, I'll put a tie on that or something.
right, I gotta figure that out. So it wants to tip. So something isn't quite adjusted, right? And maybe this is too low. Look at my poor handle. It's already got battle scars. Well, looking at the instructions, it's got how to set it. Well, I was set here. It wants to brush it one inch off the ground. So it's a little bit higher than that here. A little bit. That's where it was good outside though. So then it wants this set half to one inch off the ground. So this has to be adjusted. So this is they actually want the front up level or up. Not adjusted right. I'll see if I can screw with it here. Okay, so I played around with it. I moved this up that much. It's pretty close to six and a half. It's got an actual tape measure here. It's a little higher, but it actually wants the tines half inch to inch off the ground when it's to the set height for the brushes. So what I did is I move this, it seems to work better down here, where here it can come up. And it kind of comes at a good point here where it stays locked down. I was in the middle, I went one forward to get this a little bit higher here in the front. No, I don't think it's gonna try and tip back. So, no, it's dark out, so I'll see how it does tomorrow. Well, it might rain tomorrow, but we'll see how it does. Next time I can get out here.